Should Marshall and West Virginia be playing one another again on the gridiron? Let's talk about it. What is up, college sports fans, fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos, and welcome to yet another edition of Coos' Corner. And I'm here today to pour you out another shot of college sports content. If that kind of content is for you, please hit that red subscribe button if you haven't yet. Please hit the thumbs up on this video if you like it. Please share it with all your college sports loving friends. Let's get on with the show. A couple of days ago, I was scrolling through Twitter, and I see a retweet by my good friends over at EarsNation.com. By the way, Ears Nation is the owner of EarsGear.com. Link to EarsGear.com is in the description box. You can buy a cool shirt like the one on the screen. Also makes many other designs. Hit the link in my description box. Use promo code COOZ, C-O-U-Z, in all capital letters. You will save 20% on your purchase. But anyway, my good friend over at Ears Nation did a retweet of a tweet originally put out by a gentleman named Ben Westfall, who I don't know, but I assume is a Marshall fan, uh, based on his, his profile. Asking the question, should Marshall and West Virginia play each other? I thought, you know what? I'm going to pose this question to the Cousins Corner family. So I did it. I posted the poll on my on my YouTube page. Uh, before recording this video, I checked about 194 of you had responded so far. And to my surprise, about 56% of you had answered that, yes, they should be playing each other. I was not expecting that answer because I majority of my viewers are West Virginia fans. And I, based on what I've read in articles, most West Virginia fans don't don't really want it played because they don't see the benefit in it for West Virginia. So I thought, you know what, that's that'd be a good video topic. Uh, so I'm going to touch on it. But, so I'm, I'm going to go over the pros and cons of this series. And then at the end, I'm going to give you my opinion. Before I do that, I want to kind of give you the history of this of this rivalry. Uh, and I, I'm using quotation marks not to be disrespectful, but if you talk to most West Virginia fans, they'll tell you it's not a rivalry because they've only played 12 times, and West Virginia has won all 12 times. And the majority of those games haven't even been close. Uh, but out of respect for Marshall fans, I will say, it pro- you know, it probably if, if they played more often, it probably would be a rivalry. You know, it's like they call Bedlam a rivalry between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Oklahoma has dominated that series, but it's still considered a rivalry. So I don't see why Marshall and West Virginia would be much different than that. Both schools – Came about around the same time. I think Marshall came on the scene about four years later than West Virginia as far as the football program goes. Uh, West Virginia historically has always been a, been a much bigger school uh, and, and played football at a higher level as far as, uh, you know, the level of competition for the most part. Marshall was, one you know, one double A for most of their history up until the mid-90s. Uh, they played about, I think they played three or four times back in the early 1900s. West Virginia won all those meetings. They did not play again until 1997. It was the first year that Marshall became one single A. It was the year they had Randy Moss and Chad Pennington on the team. Marshall was very good that year. They played each other. Well, it was actually a really competitive game. Marshall led for most much of the game. But West Virginia ended up coming back to win at the end, I think, by, by about 11 points. Well, from 1997 on, they did not play again until 2006. And that took intervention from our then-governor, Joe Manchin, to make that happen. The two ADs could not come to an agreement on, on where to play the games at. West Virginia wanted to play all the games in Morgantown. Hunting, uh, obviously, Marshall wanted to play half the games in Morgantown, half of them in Huntington. Uh, Marshall's AD finally said, okay, look, we'll do a two for one. Two in Huntington, or two in Morgantown to everyone in Huntington. West Virginia would not even agree to that. They wanted it to be like a three for one deal. So, Joe Manchin steps in. Gets the two sides together, they come up with a plan. Okay, we're going to play a seven-game series from 2006 through 2012. The first three, the first, two out of the first three will be in Morgantown. The, four, the year four will be played at the stadium of the team who wins the best two out of the first three, basically. And then from then on, two of the next three were played in Morgantown as well. Uh, so basically, they ended up playing five of the seven years in Morgantown. West Virginia won every one of those meetings. All but two were not even close. There was one game, I think, Geno Smith's first year uh, as a starting quarterback. Marshall was ahead to a late in the game. Geno Smith mounted a huge comeback for the Mountaineers. They ended up winning the game in overtime. There was also that very memorable lightning game uh, after Dana Hogerson had come on the scene. There was a long, really long game where there was like a four-hour lightning delay. They ended up calling the game, uh, I think, early in the second half or some point in the second half. 
I think the score was 34 to 14. Marshall fans weren't happy about that. But for the safety of all involved, they had they probably didn't have much of a choice. But so long story short, West Virginia has dominated the series in every game with the exception of a handful have been blowouts. Uh, hence the reason most West Virginia fans say it's not really a rivalry. In the since the landscape of since the landscape of college football has changed now, should it be revisited? Well, let's go over the pros and cons, and at the end, I'll tell you whether it should be or not. Well, let's look at the pros. Number one, it's good for the state of West Virginia. It's it's good for local businesses. It brings because the fans are interested. Uh, the games typically either sell out or at least come close to selling out. It brings a lot of fans into Huntington, a lot of fans into Morgantown. Very good economic, and it's also good for the state. It is you know it really piques interest in football for the whole state for that one weekend, and it kind of brings everybody together, so to speak. Uh, pro number two, travel. It'll be a close away game for each team, whether it be in Morgantown or Huntington, and especially for West Virginia. As we all know, they do a lot of traveling just in conference, so they try to keep their, their non-conference games close. This will do that. And the final pro is really only a pro for Marshall, and that is revenue. Marshall can make a lot of money off of this game because Mountaineer fans will go to Huntington to watch that game. There's a very large contingent of West Virginia fans in the southern part of West Virginia close to Huntington. Now. I, it's actually not a pro for West Virginia, but more of a con, and here's why. Because West Virginia makes zero money traveling to Huntington. At least, to my understanding, they wouldn't. It's one less home game they could potentially play. And, you know, they, they make money off home games because they're selling tickets, they're getting the gate fees, they're selling concessions, the whole, whole nine yards. They go to Huntington, all that money goes to Marshall. So unless every game's in Morgantown, or at least, you know, four out of five or whatever is in Morgantown, to West Virginia, there's no economic benefit. Another con, strength of schedule. L- losing the Marshall, for, if you're West Virginia, with Marshall being a, a group of five school, you know, strength of schedule matters now in this new era of the college football playoff. And if you're going to play, most teams do play at least one gimme game out of conference against an FCS school or something. Marshall's not a gimme game. Marshall would actually be a potential. Some years, Marshall would be potentially as good as West Virginia. I mean, heck, there's been some recent seasons. Well, Marshall could probably compete with West Virginia, if not beat them. So it's not a gimme game. But at the same time, it doesn't really boost your schedule strength if you win the game, if that makes sense. So there's, it's really a no-win situation for West Virginia University. If they win the game, it's whoop de doo you beat Marshall. If you lose the game, it can tank your season. All right, and then another con, traveling to Marshall doesn't help West Virginia in recruiting. Driving to Morgantown doesn't help Marshall in recruiting. It's very important when, when, these, when these teams look at away games, especially regional away games, they like playing games within their recruiting area. Uh, I mean, look, for example, with West Virginia, not only is Pitt a good rival for us, Pittsburgh is also a very, very important recruiting area for West Virginia. Same with Maryland. West Virginia recruits a lot of players from the Maryland, D.C. area. So Maryland's a, an important away game to travel, not only for rivalry purposes, but for recruiting purposes. Virginia Tech. West Virginia recruits a lot of players out of Virginia. So there again, traveling into the traveling into Virginia, Maryland, uh, Pennsylvania, even Ohio, those are big recruiting territories for West Virginia. So playing away games in those states could help recruiting. There's not a lot of Division I Power 5 talent in the state of West Virginia. We all know that because of our low population. So there's no benefit to either Marshall or West Virginia playing game, playing away games in state. It doesn't benefit recruiting at all. And for, and for West Virginia's sake, they're already dominate. They're already getting the Power 5 kids out of Huntington anyway. We've got three on the roster right now, and one coming in the summer. Two of our starting offensive linemen are from Spring Valley High School right in Huntington. And we've got a tight end coming this summer that was the number one recruit in the state of West Virginia from Spring Valley High School in Huntington. So West Virginia is already getting recruits that are in Huntington anyway. West Virginia does not need to travel to Huntington to play an away game, and I don't think it benefits Marshall to travel to Morgantown either. Uh, now, you look at one of the commenters, I think it was Gregory Krug, so shout out to Gregory Krug who commented under my poll that if West Virginia is going to play Albany and Robert Morris and some of these other small schools, why can't they play Marshall? Well, and I got to thinking, good point. But most of those games are home games. VMI comes to Morgantown. Albany comes to Morgantown. Robert Morris comes to Morgantown. New T. Martin comes to Morgantown. All within the next few years, between now and 2029 season, I think. All of those are home games. So all West Virginia, 
Now, they will pay those schools to come there. Usually, I think that's how that works typically. But West Virginia will still probably profit from that game because of all the ticket sales, concessions, and whatnot. I, I was baffled a little bit by the fact that West Virginia plays two away games against smaller level schools. They play one at East Carolina in 2026. And what's baffling to me about that game is there it's not a home and home. We go to East Carolina, but they don't I don't see them on the schedule coming to Morgantown at any point. I don't know why West Virginia agreed to that. The only thing I can think of is A, we had a hole to fill on our schedule and they could fill it, maybe. Or or B, what maybe the staff has some reason to go there to play an away game for recruiting purposes. Uh, or do we owe East Carolina an away game from a past agreement? I don't know. Uh, I don't know the reasoning. I'm sure there's a reason, but we do go to East Carolina in 2026, who's on the same, who's, who's a group of five school just like Marshall. And then we play the University of Ohio. Now, that's not Ohio State, but Ohio University, which is a group of five school. Uh, we play them at home in 2027 and 2029, but we play them away in 2025, and I've not known West Virginia to do that in quite some time. But, the, but when you think about the recruiting aspect, Ohio is one of the biggest recruiting areas for West Virginia. We draw as many players out of Ohio maybe as any state we recruit. And, it, you know, it's a bordering state, so maybe West Virginia going to play in Ohio helps our recruiting. Uh, other than that, I really don't see the benefit in that. We did get Ohio to come to Morgantown twice. Uh, so, you know, it's a two-for-one deal, which benefits us. But at, at the end of the day, what's my final opinion? I'm, if I'm Shane Lyons or I'm the athletic director of West Virginia University and it's not going to benefit me financially, as a matter of fact, it may hurt me, and I'm not going to get any recruiting benefit from it at all, then why would I do it? I, I, to me, uh, so, so I guess at the end of the day, I will, I will err on the side of saying they should not play the game because it does not benefit West Virginia University to play this football game, period. And they, in today's world, it's all about the, it's all about the greenbacks. If West Virginia is going to not make money or even lose money on a game, on a series with Marshall, then don't play the series. I mean, there's just no reason to. It's a shame. I wish it wasn't like that. I would love to see them play every year. But I just don't think it makes sense for West Virginia to do it. Uh, I understand why people want it played. But if you look at it from a financial perspective and a recruiting perspective, it makes no sense. Now, it would benefit Marshall probably more than West Virginia. But West Virginia has to look out for West Virginia, not Marshall. They each have to take care of their own own backyard, so to speak. Uh, and I think that's what West Virginia's done by making the decision not to play this series. Well, guys, let me know in the comments section what do you think about this. Do you think West Virginia and Marshall should renew their rivalry and should start playing each other once again and give me your reasoning why or why not? Uh, and do you think I'm off base? Uh, I don't mean this as a look. You know, my nose at Marshall. I actually want Marshall to, su to succeed on the football field. When they play teams outside of WVU, I cheer for them. I want them to do well. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I bleed gold and blue, and any time Marshall plays West Virginia, I'm definitely going to cheer for West Virginia. But I don't have any animosity toward Marshall at all, which might be why I have a hard time considering them a rival because, to me, for someone to be a rival, there needs to be some animosity. I have no animosity toward Marshall. So, that being said, let me know in the comments. Uh, once again, I ask that you please check out the earsgear.com site. Use promo code COOS with all caps to get 20% off. Also have links in my description to Fanatics, to Amazon, and to the BetUS site where you can do your online gambling. All those links will get you into the site. Take the BetUS, you use the promo code JOIN125, you get 125% bonus. Uh, the Fanatics and Amazon links will get you into those sites to make your purchases. It doesn't cost you any extra. It just gets you into the site easier without having to, to search it online or Google it. And all of that will benefit me as well and help me grow my channel. If you want to just support me for free, like I said, hit the red subscribe button. Give me the thumbs up. Share it with your friends. I appreciate you tuning in. And until next time, Q Country Roads.